everybody glad you just made it through?
if it had not been, I don't even want to start thinking where I could have been, where I should have been, where I would have been. But God. He wants to hear from you. That's right. Open up your mouth and give it to him. Thank you. It's going to get rough in here today. 
let us pray. God, I need you to stand with me. Give me the Holy Ghost to speak and to say what you would have me to say. God, and I pray, God, that it may prick the hearts of those who, that they don't get offended, but they get agitated to the place that what was a stain on them is now clean again. So God, all I'm asking you to do is allow your word to do the work. Wrap me in your presence that no man or woman shall hear or see my deficiencies, spouses, sins, or my shortcomings. God, but they only see and hear you working through me by your power divine and the people of God that really need a word. All that shall be man. Amen. 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 It is no secret, my brothers and sisters, that life happens to the best of us. Yeah. And sometimes when life happens, uh, Sister Nova, is that sometimes it leaves a stain or an impression in our minds. Yeah. And sometimes we wrestle with the trauma. We wrestle with the friction and the frustration that has caused us sleepless nights. That has caused us to not be in control of our very emotions. That at the sight of someone or at the sight of a certain place, you start tensing up. Hands start sweating. Anxiety starts profusing over your body. Anybody know what I'm talking about? This sermon topic for today is wrestling with the residue. Wrestling with the residue. What is shocking, beloved, is people in the world can't forgive because they ain't been saved. But what is shocking is those who had already been forgiven. The ones who know Jesus and know what he said on the cross when he looked at his very hands, the same ones that pinned him on the cross. And he began to pray to his father and said, Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. We hear those words every year around the Easter time. And it seems, Miss People, peoples, that we forget those words the rest of the year. Lest we forget it, we have also been forgiven too. If I ask you five things that God has forgiven you for, it would be hard because you would not even know where to start. If you had a sign over your head of a list of all the things God had to forgive you for, it would be, as they say in Leland, a country mile along. Forgiveness, beloved, is an essential component of Christian character. We are going through this neo-Pentecostal wave in Christendom where if I just put a praise on it, then everything is going to be all right. Praise is good. Praise feels good. But the issue is what happens when you've done praise? What happens when you finish shouting and running and doing your leaps and, 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 and your jumping jacks or whatever you do to express your praise to God? Because Jesus says, how can you um, uh, serve a God whom you've never seen? And you can't even say, hey, your neighbor. Okay. See how, see how y'all not responding to me? That's what happens when folk find themselves between a rock and a hard place and find themselves dealing with their own guilt and shame of how they look at God and praise God and neglect their neighbors. You act as if you are uh, God's chosen one. That you are all by yourself and everybody else is in their own department by themselves. And you act as if now that you've gotten in church, now that you've gotten a title in church, now that you've gotten your St. John suit, your red bottom, your hair done, and you, you know the church lingo and as if other people don't need to be forgiven like you. 
had to be forgiven. Because if you take a trip down memory lane, it was you out there sipping, tipping, and dipping. And we talked about it yesterday, that and some of us, the only reason why you ain't sipping, tipping, is because you can't. Because it's messing with your meditation. Discovered the church folk deal with yeah. tithing yeah. and forgiving others. Yeah. It seems as if we wrestle with this idea of forgiving somebody because you don't want to look like, as millennials say, a sinner. You don't want to look like the weaker. Person. You don't want to look like a dog with its tail tucked between his legs. You don't want to. You don't want nobody to see you like that because you're so consumed with the appearance of strength. When the truth of the matter is, your strength is not in how you retaliate. It's how well you can forgive those who despitefully use you. That's right. That's right. This is for those who are trying to mature in Christ. Um, that, that you know that you got some unforgiveness seated and, and rooted down in your heart. You're wondering why you can't be uh, blessed beyond where you are. Maybe it's some things that you got to uproot out of your heart. In order for God to bless you the way he wants to bless you. I told y'all last Sunday, sometimes we are our biggest enemies. becomes why can't you forgive? You mad about something and you don't even know really why you mad. You just know the person and you identify that person with the trauma that has happened in your life and so now you've labeled this person based on your pain and now what you're doing as psychologists say that you're now projecting your pain on somebody else. You would understand it as hurt people hurt people. God commands us, beloved, to forgive others. Here it is, because it reflects his character. If you cannot call yourself a Christian and not forgive, because you are now an ambassador for him, and so how can you misrepresent him by not forgiving those as he forgave you? Unforgiveness is no less an offense to God than stealing or drunkenness, or uh, it, is, it is on the same level. Sin is sin, y'all. And just because you we can't see it. Okay. Um, let me press the clock. Certainly, my brothers and sisters, unforgiveness is more frequently found in the opening uh, the, the, that the people of God than the sins we typically regard as uh, heinous. And, and But scripture is clear that God despises an unforgiving spirit. In fact, I want you to just think, if God did not forgive you, where would you be? As God's children, we ought to mirror and reflect God's character. Yes. That if God is your father, which is in heaven, you ought to resemble him in some kind of way. Yes, so forgiveness is an integral part. Somebody say integral. Yes. It is an integral part of the Christian's new nature. When you are born in Christ, old things are passed away. And all things should become new. And you cannot live an old lifestyle and expect God to still bless you. And what Paul is admonishing us in this text 
as he's writing to the church in Ephesus, he is making it very clear from the beginning. He talks about the call that is on our life and how we ought to uh, be living and our giftings and all of these things. And the last section of this, he talks about breathing the spirit. Which lets me know that forgiveness is a spiritual component to every Christian's life. My beloved brothers and sisters, if you read in the New King James Version of this text, you would find what Paul is saying. He says, let all bitterness. Another word for bitterness, and this is one of my favorite titles, very movies, is called um, acrimony. Acrimony literally means to be bitter. And a lot of us, we, we, we try to fake the funk. Acting like we got it all together when actuality, you're harboring bitterness in your heart. And when you have bitterness in your heart, you can't worship God the same way you're supposed to worship Him. You can't lift up your hands because you have the weight of this unforgiveness on you. You're wondering why everybody else around you is lifting up holy hands and shouting and smiling and praising God. And you want to be there, but you can't because you got so much Unforgiveness is a weight that you've got to lose in order to experience the fullness of God. And what Paul tells us and lets us know about bitterness is that bitterness, he gives us components, he says, uh, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. Hmm. Wrath is is anger personified. Um, uh, wrath is um, uncontrollable. It's when you spew out those expletives that you know you can't.